Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news with us today. Happy to have him back for the first interview of 2022. Kareem Namji, CEO at Marble Financial Trades in Canada, MRBL. For our friends in the US, MRBLF. And for our friends in Europe on Frankfurt under 2VO. Uh, we've all heard, if you need to know, if you need to understand Marble because you're new, here's what you need to understand. We've all heard about how artificial intelligence is being used for our personal health and wellness via wearables, right? Uh, they deliver personalized analysis and recommendations. We're all comfortable with it. It makes a lot of sense. Well, Marble does the same thing for our financial health and wellness. They're a fintech company uses the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning to help educate Canadians to build and manage credit to improve their financial wellness. And trust me, it's a problem. 50% of Canadians are living paycheck to paycheck. For every dollar of income, we're carrying a dollar 71 in debt. In fact, I saw something the other day, we're now rivaling Greece. My Marble, the My Marble platform goes way beyond credit scores. Practically speaking, it offers very specific, personalized financial recommendations about things like when to pay bills, how to prioritize debt management decisions, and even tracks and highlights your personal, your personal data. So it does everything you need to do, to do, and the timing is perfect because as a result of this pandemic, surveys have told us that the adoption of fintech products has accelerated dramatically, with 71% of respondents saying they now manage more of their finances online. The company's success, quite a bit of it, but here's a couple of things. They signed a secured licensing agreement with lendforall.ca. That's expected to gain roughly 5,000 new Marble members monthly. Uh, license agreement with Debts Adu, I love that name, where they're expecting to gain roughly 500 users, new users per month. On and on, their Inverite verification open bank software is now, is now at a record 100,000 monthly transactions, approaching 1.5 million unique uh, consumers who have shared the data. And here's the headline today, it's a long one, a licensing agreement for its Connect API and Inverite open banking software with 812 financial that's going to gain that's going to gain approximately 2000 new my marble men, members per month kareem that's a mouthful because you guys are doing so much welcome back my friend yeah thanks for having me george uh we can end it right there you were just bang on with everything that we've done there so i appreciate you sharing that with uh with the audience well, i appreciate that but that's the big picture we got you on as ceo because we want to talk details before we get into this, you know, this agreement specifically and, and why it's important. There are a lot of new people always watching. Oh, and I gave a pretty good intro there, I think, of Marble. But if you can, you tell investors what Marble is all about. So Marble is a fintech. Our focus is in the area of financial inclusion. Uh, you shared a few statistics. Every dollar of disposable income, the number is actually higher now, $1.77 of debt. 50% uh, 50, 50 of North Americans in general are living paycheck to paycheck. 70% 70 70 of North Americans uh, are worried uh, whether they're going to be able to make their bill payments over the next 12 months without for going further into debt. Guidelines uh, with respect to financial institutions have uh, become more stringent, which means the divide between those people that are excluded and included in the mainstream financial services is, is gotten wider. Inflation is high. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we're hearing about mortgage rates here in Canada, although we've had a stay last week, we know mortgage rates are going up. So a big segment of the population is starting to feel squeezed more so than uh, they were ever before. So it's a perfect time for a company like Marble that provides uh, finance, uh, fintech uh, using uh, co consumers data, both in the banking, financial transactions, as well as their credit transactions. We amalgamate this data and we consumerize it by helping educate the consumer about those things that are important for them towards financial wellness. And, and that's what I love about Marble. By the way, you're both a B2C and a B2B. We'll talk about that. Uh, you've got both ends covered. But for the part that people at home can relate to, what's great is that we all think we can manage our finances until we realize, holy smokes, I'm overwhelmed. Where do I start? But a platform like my Marble with artificial intelligence and machine learning right? Doesn't just give you just regular credit scores and tells you you're over your credit limit or something like that. It gives you real actionable advice. Okay, George, you're, you're having, here's your situation. Pay this first, pay that second. 
you know, pay the minimum on that, but max out that one. It gives you really great actual advice to get your credit, you know, your whole financial situation back, you know, and, and cleaned up as soon as possible. What kind of response do you guys hear from your users? What have you been hearing over the last three to six months in terms of how, you know, how, how much it's been helping them out? Yeah, especially over the last three or six months, a lot of consumers here, especially in Canada, have now been coming up for air. Um, until the recent uh, updates on the protocols and, and what's happening with the pandemic. But uh, people have started to feel a little bit uh, that the worst is probably behind us, or we've just bas basically become socialized to the fact that this is currently what we're dealing with. But every household has goals, right? They want to buy a home. They want to save up for education. They want to pay down debt. They want to buy a car. And people want to get back to life. And when they come out there and they go to their financial institution, uh, we're seeing a lot more people getting declined. And so that's where our focus is when I talk about financial inclusion. And so the responses we've getting from the consumers, twofold. One, the software is helping them. It's providing insights and specific prescriptive recommendations on areas of opportunity where they can focus on. At the same time, what we learned is that traditionally people don't normally think about financial wellness unless and until they're there in front of their mortgage broker or at the car dealership. And then they find out that they got declined and or they got approved but didn't get the rate they were looking at a, for. At a way higher rate. Exactly, right? So the, one of the major criterion in assessing an individual's other than ability to pay is the credit worthiness. And so it's very important as we're focused around financial wellness, uh, individual goes to apply for a mortgage or a car loan, it's better for them to know before they go because at that point in time, that consumer gets declined and it's, it's a lose-lose situation. That consumer everyday person is not part of everyday economy. The for-profit businesses are not monetizing that customer. And so everybody walks away and unhappy and little does anybody know that, that that individual could be 30 days away from qualifying. So what we did in addition to our direct to consumer, and you mentioned this, our B2B platform, we're, we're partnering with mortgage companies, with auto lenders, with financial planners, where the consumer yeah. is actually transacting. So we're associating financial wellness with the goal that the consumer has in mind. Yeah, I want that's, to buy a, a home. that's the I want part to buy that I, that's the part that I love. That if you were just a B two C and going after trying to get George and Mary and John and Bob, it it's a very intensive. Oh, by the way, my camera just vanished there, but don't worry, I'm still here. Okay, cream, so keep going. Uh, it would be very intensive and very expensive. But what you're doing instead is you're partnering with George Com Financial. I do auto loans or something like that, and I've got thousands of customers. And you're partnering with me so that when uh, Kareem walks in and doesn't get approved or gets approved at a rate that just isn't doesn't work for him, he, he you know George Con Financial can easily look at Kareem and say, "Hey, download my marble here, and this will get you back in order, and come back in 30, 60 days, and we'll get you that loan." So that how much stronger how much stronger are you over other traditional companies uh, in in the space that you got both the consumer side and the B two B side? Yeah, so the B2B side is uh, is very key because partnering with uh, other partners in the mortgage industry, car lending, just basically in the credit industry is very important for us. As a business, it's very important because we're helping the consumer at the point of the pain, at the point of the transaction, at the point of need. Uh, we're helping our partners engage with the customer. Uh, they're leveraging our technology to engage that customer, keep them in the loop uh, so that they can uh, increase the lifetime value of the customer. Where it's helping Marble as a business, we're driving down our cost of acquisition. Uh, for instance, uh, with the news release that went out with 812, uh, they're seeing 2,000 uh, applications per month coming into their platform. And now those individuals would automatically become members in the My Marble platform. It helps 812 continue to engage that consumer, not just necessarily for the ones that they're approving, but what about all the ones that they're declining? These partners have spent a lot of money in acquiring that lead or that customer. And although they can't help them now, they want to be able to nurture that consumer at a certain point uh, in time. Now, for the ones that are being approved, imagine coming in for a mortgage. You think you're going to get a 2% mortgage, but you only qualify for 8% or 10%. Well, down the road, as Marvel is working with these consumers through our platform, uh, we're helping the consumer get to a higher standing with their financial wellness. So over time, they can graduate from an 8% to a 6% to a 4%, and everybody wins. 
right? And so that's what we're really excited about. Uh, a couple of our partners have started to go live um, already. We signed 15 of these relationships towards the end of the year. Wow. There, is some there is some technology integration. So we're working with our partners sure, uh, sure. In, in terms of integrating our technology into their flow. In, in a sense, we've also got a distributed sales force, right? So uh, uh, because we've we pre-sold the value to our partners, uh, they are using our technology to add our our offering as part of their offering. And yeah, that's uh, what goes back to my point. That that's what I love. That if you were just a B to C, that's a that's a very. I mean, it could be lucrative, but it could kill a lot of companies trying to acquire one customer at a time. So I love yes. your B to B. So on that note, let's talk about some of these. So the one today is uh, eight twelve financial. Right. Now, in order to understand this, first we have to understand your Inverite open banking software, which is what you know, you've, licensed, you've licensed that to 812 Financial. What is your Inverite open banking software for, for people at home? And why does eight, uh, why did 812 Financial license it from you? What's, the, what's their value proposition? Right, so with Inverite, is it a technology uh, software platform that we acquired in April of last year? Uh, it's referred to as technology, it's called instant bank verification. So the technology through the customer's consent, very, again, uh, towards open banking, the consumer decides who they're dealing with and who they're going to share their information with. Everybody wants a very quick application process and wanting to be able to get paperless. So the consumer provides consent to their bank account transactions. Uh, Inverite technology gets the transactions for the consumer's bank account up to 12 months worth of data. Uh, and the lender or the partner that the consumer is working with gets the this data in real time. Why that's important, not only does it provide insights into the health of the bank account or the transactions in the bank account. Remember, we, we can verify income. We know how much a customer is spending. We know about their cash flow. Uh, and the, the lender gets this at the time of the application and allows them to adjudicate and provide an approval or a decline instantaneously. So it, it speeds up the application process, number one. Uh, but at the same time, through um, AI and machine learning, we've developed a risk score that uh, uh, provides the health of the bank account to the lender. So they know, are there any bad habits uh, with uh, gambling or whatever it might be for that consumer? We know when the, well, how much a consumer makes. We know how much they spend. We know who they're spending with. And this is all done through the consumer's consent. So why would- uh, I was about to say, that's very important. It sounds like if you're spying on consumers or acquiring the data without their consent, uh, you've got their consent because George presumably wants- you to help him with connecting with financial institutions but if you're picking up anything in there that's that's a problem uh it, it just helps both sides it does absolutely and because with the b2b strategy the consumer wants to get their answer asap so the value proposition is already there do you want to go up and give me 12 months of bank statements and scan them and send them over to us for the for the especially tech savvy lenders regardless of what vertical they're in it helps accelerate less paper. Um, it goes into their adjudication engine and the data uh, is provided to them in real time for them to help make a decision, right? So the value proposition is there for both sides. Um, at the same time, uh, with the Inverite software, we, we do have a risk score that helps identify the health of the bank account, uh, a lot, especially in a scenario that we're dealing with right now where uh, you, you question, you wonder whether the consumer has the ability to pay, right? And so that's very important for lenders. So this relationship with 812 is important to us. They're a very tech savvy um, uh, lender in the mortgage space, uh, uh, providing uh, mortgage applications, both for traditional banks, as well as the alternative finance space for private lenders, or what's typically referred to as B lenders, where consumers typically have a harder time getting approved. What do you think it says, Kareem, as to third-party validation? You've got 812 Financial. You said at the end of the year, you signed about 15 other uh, partnerships and so on and so forth uh, on the B2B side. What does it say about third-party validation to the world that institutions you know, and, and financial companies are saying, yeah, we want to integrate my marble because it's got for, you know, they've all got their own reasons, but, you know, it really helps us with our business. 
Yeah, it absolutely does. So, you know, over the course uh, from uh, from when I joined Marble in March 2019, we had a strategy. Uh, the pandemic obviously challenged certain assumptions in some ways accelerated some of the things that we thought were going to happen two years down the road, for example, a recession. Uh, but at the same time, continuing to stay the course with our fintech platform, underlying, uh, un underlying all of that was the importance of data in helping uh, everyday people who own this data get what they're looking for. And that, I'm referring to open banking. So to have partners understand the importance of the fintech um, leveraging the data that we provide with the consumer's consent is, is, is valid. It's it absolutely validating. Uh, there's a lot of things we learned during the pandemic, such as associating our fintech, our data, um, and our technology with the goals of everyday people. Um, whether it's paying down debt or improving credit score, buying a home, buying a car, savings. You know, for instance, uh, whether you're looking at the wealthy barber, which I grew up with uh, decades ago, uh, we always talk about a 90 day emergency fund where the pandemic just crushed that. that. 90 That's days wasn't necessarily enough when you're dealing with with an enemy that you can't even see, right? And so uh, everything that we knew about before was challenged, but the importance of having an emergency fund or savings or paying down debt, those principles still exist. We're just basically using those principles and using real data to consumerize this for everyday people, regardless of socioeconomic status, right? When we're talking about underbanked, it doesn't necessarily relate to income. The reason why this is important, I was on a interview last week where we were talking about inflation and mortgage rates. Well, when inflation happens, prices of everything start to increase. So all of us are impacted, right? But for people that are on fixed incomes or a challenge on the income side, uh, shelter costs, um, and hopefully you get a chance to talk about front and lobby and the rent reporting yep. service, but shelter That's costs right increase, now. transportation costs increase, and, and as well, food costs increase. So for people that are underbanked or financially included, the rise in certain prices really impacts them, right? So this is why it's important. Uh, you know, I was speaking to an uh, investor group last week and the way Marble was uh, pitched to the investor group in a very simple way is Karim helps people get better interest rates. And I thought, wow, that was kind of um, Marble for, for quote unquote dummies, but really, that's what it's about. How that really gets the core. That really gets the core of the value well, proposition. I mean, that ultimately, that. Exactly. that is the exactly. ultimate conclusion. Better, better financial get... wellness, better credit scores, um, shows financial institutions that you're a better risk, which translates into uh, better uh, rates. And at the same, at, at that time, it starts bringing debt levels down, right? Especially when you're dealing with inflation, right? And you've got less disposable income. So. Thanks for letting me kind of get on my soapbox there for a bit. I went no, no, listen. And the 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 validation from all the financial institutions that are teaming up with you says you're not just talking your book, right? Because we expect the CEO to be talking his book. But at the end of the day, you're you're not just talking the talk, you're walking the talk. So let's talk about, um, actually, before I ask you about front lobby, I'm asking one more question about the B2B side, since we're here. So, you know, it's always hard to get B2B partnerships at the beginning of anything. But as it seems like you're accelerating now, so should we expect B2B partnerships to play a really big role in Marble success in 2022? Absolutely. And, and the key to understanding that is we're trying to attach this to uh, the goal um, that the consumer basically has. And every one of us have it. Everybody wants to be homeowners. That's getting expensive, but people want to pay down debt. Uh, people want to improve their credit score. Uh, it's something as simple as you can get declined for rent. Imagine not being able to afford a home, but you can't even get rent because you've got poor credit or no credit, right? And so this all kind of ties in together. And the B2B partnerships, um, as, as uh, we're working on them um, quite a bit, a lot more resources have been devoted in that side. But as we start announcing these uh, partnerships, uh, we do get inundated with calls from competitors of our partners uh, because they start to see the value of what we're, we're providing. Uh, you don't get boxed in, do you, do you? Like if you do a deal with George Com Financial, does that mean you can't do a, a deal with Mary Com Financial? Or do you, when you get calls from your customers' competitors, you take them on as clients also? Or no, we don't, right? So there's no exclusivity on these deals uh, from that perspective. And the reason is this, is that every one of our partners believe that they're providing something unique 
to their customers, right? And, or they're delivering it in a very unique way. So they differentiate themselves uh, based on geography, based on right. you know, their partnerships. So they're differentiated themselves um, pretty well in and of itself, right? So there's more a first mover or take advantage of the market in terms of opportunity. Um, and, and basically we're, we're helping monetize declines. A lot of people are getting declined. And so how do we um, create some value with the marketing dollars that our partners are already spending by keeping the, the, the consumer close to them using our engagement platform and then providing triggers that when the consumer reaches a certain level of financial wellness, an offer can go out to that consumer automatically, right? So we're, especially for the low tech partners that we have, it's a real benefit for them, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, especially the low, te low tech side. So let's talk about front lobby. That's your new rent reporting service. And you just kind of touched on it there. Clearly, uh, you didn't launch on a lark. There's real demand for that. There's a real problem you're solving. What's the problem? What are you solving with Front Lobby? Well, so I'll give you a little bit of background there. But rent payments, um, they're important and uh, traditionally underutilized criteria that are, that are used by credit reporting agencies that lenders also uh, could benefit from. It is it. It comes to probably the single largest payment that the mass segment of the population is doing on a monthly basis. But imagine it's you've got you've got some credit with the landlord, but landlords don't report because it's it's time and cost prohibitive uh, for landlords to be able to report. So we partnered with uh, a front lobby uh, with and landlord credit bureau, which is a rent reporting service. And what we do is through this partnership, we're now using rent as uh as uh to be able to report to the uh, equifax to show and build positive trade lines for consumers that are either looking to rebuild their credit or new consumers such as students people getting into the market that have no positive trade line or new immigrants to canada that are looking to establish credit here and so this partnership is now uh using rent as a payment towards a creditor that is reporting on your credit uh, your credit report. How do you expect to, uh, how do you, how do you, they, what's your business model around front lobby? So there is a direct to consumer approach here, like 50% of Marble's consumer base are renters, right? But when we're looking at our partners, uh, imagine uh, a partner, a mortgage company that is looking to approve somebody for a mortgage and gets declined because of no credit history or poor credit history. Uh, there's a lot of rent to own companies uh, that are now kind of in between rent and uh, home ownership. Uh, this can benefit those companies and helping develop a positive trade line. So when the customer is ready to be able to transact and get into the home ownership side, it's there. Or it could be a, a new student that's renting but wants to buy their first car, but has no credit. Now, I, I do want to underline to the audience here having no trade line or credit information is not necessarily a good thing because there's no indication to a lender to take a chance on you, right? So that's why it's important. And historically, rent is not being included on credit reports. So this is very innovative. Yeah, for us and, it's a, and it's such a big part. I mean, it's still, uh, it's, it's uh, home ownership or home renting, whatever is still probably the biggest expense most people have. So exactly. to not have, to not have your rent being reported in is is probably a big disservice to George. If I've been renting for two and a half years, always on time, uh, paying you know paying my rent, paying my bills, landlord's happy. That should actually count towards my 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 credit history. Exactly. So front lobby and us and Marble should we have a shared vision of bringing financial credit inclusion, credit equality, uh, and financial wellness to all Canadians. One third of Canadian households are renters. There's 30,000 property management businesses in, in Canada. Obviously, everything in terms of numbers is dwarfed in Canada related to the U.S. where 43 million housing units are rented and there's over 300,000 uh, registered property management businesses. So uh, I believe it bodes well both for acquisition of consumers on our platform, but it also provides additional benefit in, uh, in the B2B space for us as well. Kareem, how well positioned is Marble for 2022? Uh, you know, how happy are you? Because it just seems like 
again, going back to the B2B partnerships, it just tells that the industry uh, is has accepted, you know, that third party validation, that, com that commercial acceptance. How well positioned are you guys to really hit your next phase of growth in 2022. Yeah, so I think for multiple reasons, we're we're very we're positioned in such a, a key way uh, for significant growth in 2002 and beyond. And so, once upon a time, the strategy and and the vision existed, and in a lot of ways, COVID exacerbated the problem that already existed, and it made people pay attention. It made people pay attention to fintechs or who's doing well in this space. We've had a lot of employee benefits companies also very excited about providing our solutions. And I, we might have talked about this before, George, uh, but providing financial wellness solutions in, in the workplace because it's become a big challenge for yep. employers uh, looking to get productivity. So the wellness space is uh, already uh, attracted a lot of interest and where Marble is positioned in terms of its fintech and our B2B strategy, uh, it's uh, the pandemic has exacerbated the problem, magnified it and made people pay attention both on the consumer side as well as partners that are looking uh, to actually start ramping up after a year and a half of, of recessionary behavior where people were kind of locked down and we're starting to see uh, the uptick from the economy, but that's now coming with inflation and uh, rising interest rates. So all these macroeconomic factors uh, are really uh, proving to be um, timely in terms of highlighting. Yeah, unfortunate for the economy, but, yes. but it means marbles needed now more than ever. Right. So I say that with caution because uh, there, there is a lot of hurt in the industry, but it's important for both businesses and, and consumers to know that Marble and companies like Marble are here uh, to be able to help. And so we're, we're pretty excited about our growth opportunities in 2022 and beyond. Kareem, congratulations on you know, another great licensing agreement, one of many that you've announced, one of many more, no doubt, uh, that I think is to come. I can't wait to have you back. You're always such a great interview. We should be doing a lot more of these on a regular basis. So let's make a commitment here that no more than every, you know, six weeks, uh, because this is a fast evolving business. It's a fast evolving space. Um, you know, financial wellness fascinates me because we're always so concerned about our, our, our health, our, our, our physical wellness, our mental wellness, which is great. But financial wellness, I'm just going to say anecdotally, is so tied into that. Right, because if your financial wellness isn't in order, what do you do? You get more stress and anxiety. That's mental health, mental wellness issues. If your financial wellness isn't in order, what do you do? That stress and anxiety, you eat more, or you exercise less, or you sleep less. So to me, financial wellness at some point, you know, it may sound crazy, and this is George, always the uh, the biz dev guy, but at some point you might want to team up with a, uh, a physical wellness group out there, a big physical wellness leader and say, hey, you know, we're tied together, even though we're two different things, you know, financial wellness and physical wellness, mental wellness, all I don't care what you tell me, it is in intricately connected. Yeah, so we're already on that, George. No way. Yeah, so we're already <laughs> Come on. on that angle. So hopefully something, uh, uh, there's something more for us to talk about in the near future. Uh, anything you can kind of tell us about right now or not, not unless I want to get into severe trouble, but, um, physical wellness, uh, mental wellness, you made some, uh, analogies, uh, with respect to health, uh, in the wearables thing, you know, we, we know how many steps we take, we know our calories, we know about our weight, but what about, our financial wellness and how do we measure those things, right? So the pandemic and the fact that people couldn't go out there and work out and uh, other than just going for walks, um, it, it slowed things down in the in the physical wellness space. So we're not out of the woods yet with respect to uh, what we're working on, but hopefully soon we can talk further about that, George. And I'd love to come on here and share that with you in the near future. And Kareem, full disclosure, all kidding aside, I had no clue that you were guys were working on anything as for in terms of a crossover, for, you know, that's just the way my mind works. I, I interviewed, I've interviewed thousands of small cap companies. I know how, you know, sometimes I, so I didn't know that you guys were talking. I just want to make sure everyone at home knows that I had no idea. No, it wasn't. Uh, that's I, I, great I that you take, are. You're just a smart guy, George. But when you look at it and you think about uh, the correlations you can make with uh, employee benefits, physical wellness, uh, it's just natural. If you're paying attention to this industry, smart minds can always see, wouldn't it be great if this also happened? So 
Uh, you mentioned it, so I, I couldn't not um, address it, but uh, there, there are opportunities in multiple verticals uh, for our financial wellness. All right. I can't wait. Can't wait, Kareem. I love it. That's why I love what you guys are doing at Marble. Uh, look, don't AI, financial wellness, personal health, all that. Uh, you know, this is just the way the world is going to go. Uh, and, and you guys are at the forefront of the financial wellness side. I love what you guys have been able to do and congratulate you and your team. Can't wait to have you back. Thanks very much, George. Appreciate it. To everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast to Kareem Nanji, CEO of Marble Financial Trades in Canada under MRBL. For our friends in the U.S. under MRBLF. For, uh, if for those of you who want to do your due diligence, two ways to do it. Get to the Agoracom hub. Take a look at the profile page there to give you a good 1,000-foot overview of what Marble is because that's important. The great thing about, about businesses like Marble is they're cutting edge and they're creating new, uh, new, big, new big markets. But that also means a lot of you aren't familiar with the nuances, aren't familiar with the business models. That's what you do there. And then link over to the, to the website uh, to, do your direct, to do your direct research and, and a deep dive. And best way, best way to possibly do your due diligence, download the app. Why not, right? So thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Thanks, George. Hey, guys, the video's over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss another great Agoracom small cap video.